types of definitions where you're an enter act type person you know doing pie in the face stuff you know falling flat in your face you know making the audience laugh you realize that clowning is all about learning how to make mistakes on purpose but make it look like the mistake is happening to you rather than you are making the mistake on purpose or acting on the mistake. So I grew up in Hanover, New Hampshire, was born in Hanover, New Hampshire. My father taught at Dartmouth College for 54 years. Um, I went to the White Church. There was a fellow named Jay, Jay Buell, who, uh, who took the youth group and started to do little plays with the youth group. And though that changed my life a lot, going down into the Chase and Sanford room and being on stage. Um, that was pretty amazing. And then that got reawakened again a few times I was in two Gilbert and Sullivan's that you know the the roar of the grease paint and the smell of the crowd you know that sort of um, wowed thing of oh the audience and the excitement of it and I definitely remember that and went to every play I could by the Dartmouth players a fellow came back I was teaching college in Pennsylvania and one of my students left for a semester and went to Paris but he came back with the skills of, of a mime, illusions, you know. Uh, and his name was Stuart Schwartz, and I liked him a lot. So I said, hey, let's meet on a Saturday, and I want you to show me what you learned. And he did, and he said, to try this and try this, and this is how this works. And I found that I took to it really quickly. there. And then there was some clown teaching at the London Academy, for sure. Um, and imp you know, and clowning's a lot of improvisation and going into the interesting zone of there's a problem and there's a solution to the problem and you can find the solution and then you can go celebration and then whoops, bang, new problem and it's and that's the way dramas are set up too. And I began teaching theater actually at the Riverside Church uh, up on Claremont Avenue. And that led me to working with youth at the, uh, in an Outward Bound type of program with the uh, Horace Mann Prep School. Um, and that and some other effects led me to Vermont, and then I completely left theater for five years entirely. Yeah, well, that's when I met my uh, clown teacher, who was Tony Montanero, the famous, most famous mime and clown teacher in America. And I saw a poster announcing a workshop, and both Peter Gould and I went to that workshop together. We, we had met before that. Stephen Stearns and I met at the Brattleboro Dump, which is now called the Brattleboro Sanitary Landfill. We got to talking because he sort of knew who, we, who I was, and I sort of knew who he was. Also, we made a deal early on that, that uh, we would never tease each other or, or put each other. Down. It was no brainer that Rosencrantz and Guildenstern are in Shakespeare. Do you want to join me? And he said, oh, in a second, I will. We decided instead of being called Rosencrantz and Guildenstern, we'd be called Rosencrantz and Guildenstern. And then we, then we just chose Guildenstern as the clown jewels of Vermont. So, so that's how we joined. And I saw a glimmer of intelligence there. You want to sell the cow? No, I don't want to sell the cow. I love her so much, I don't want to let her go, but I have to because we're starving. My mother and my wow. poor. Yeah, the act came about because in, uh, in uh, November of 1978, both of us went to uh, study in Maine 
at a, at a fantastic and world famous mime school and we were both there at the same time and since we were from the same town we began to work together, hang out together <coughs> and when we came back to Brattleboro we wanted to continue all the good things we learned by staying, uh, by keeping in touch and, and working out together. And we crawled around on the floor pretending we were bugs and we looked in the mirror and, and we did certain exercises Montanero had taught us and, and a, the Wailing Days piece came out of that and my solo piece happened uh, which was the history of travel all the way up to 2001 Space Odyssey and, and then from there all sorts of amazing things happened and we toured all over the world um, for the next uh, 25 years. We raised thousands and thousands of dollars for refugee relief and worked with Amnesty International, we worked with um, the, uh, the Quaker organization and with Oxfam and everything you can think of. We got to meet all kinds of people and then we'd go off in 10 city tours. We, we flew on one particular tour, I mean we went to Long Island, went to New York City, we flew to Denver, we flew to Seattle, we flew to Los Angeles. Uh, so, so, you think you can now draw me? Hmm? Pick up the gun in my boot. On the count of three, we shoot. One, two, three. I, what I love about clowning is the, um, uh, well, it's the proximity, it's the connection to the audience, for one thing, because it's where uh, what's happening is the interesting zone, the unexpected. Um, and in European clowning, it's really about problems, it's, it's about um, learning how to make failure part of the magnificent part of life, I guess you would say. Um, it's about being silly, uh, it's about connecting to my four-year-old and connecting to the four-year-old in the audience. Uh, it's, it's kind of all those things. And now my job is, uh, with you and with lots of other students, is to open doors. So, I like to talk to kids about ideas and metaphors and images and all the similes and all the things that are in Shakespeare. I like to inspire, I think directing, if I'm going to direct a good show, then the students are hopefully going to be inspired either by me or by the play or by the character, by the work. Um, and just to encourage people to know that um, every thread you grab onto um, may just be a loose thread or it may, may be a hair in the tail of an elephant. <laughs>